Overwatch's fire meter is a bit of an oddball. Its purpose is to provide a partial substitute for a scoreboard, yet the mechanic is often misunderstood. And it's not hard to see why. The concept of being on fire has always been pretty vague. Um, fire is um, when your hero is performing very well. We want your portrait in the lower left to light on fire. Everybody sees it on the scoreboard. The wiki page about fire is a stub. Official patch notes have only mentioned fire three times over the past six years. Even the workshop doesn't expose details about the system. As a result, we have little to no information about how fire actually works. Until now. It's useful to think of fire as a type of currency which is gained and lost under various circumstances. The fire meter displays up to 300 fire, though it is possible to hold much more. The amount of fire required to be on fire is 225, indicated by the marker below the meter. There's a minimum duration of 18 seconds in which a player can be on fire. This means once a player reaches 225 fire, they cannot drop below 225 until 18 seconds has elapsed. This mechanism is likely in place to guarantee some recognition for being on fire, even when barely over the threshold. And to prevent players from rapidly exceeding the threshold over and over and over. When fire is earned, a message will appear in the mini-feed displaying how much fire was earned and the action that caused it. To prevent spamming this feed, fire messages only display if the fire earned within the last 5 seconds is 5 or higher. Conversely, fire messages are batched in intervals of 25 to prevent messages from being held back too long. Though this can be exceeded when identical events occur simultaneously. Now that I've thoroughly covered how fire is displayed, let's go over how fire is earned. There are many actions that give players fire, but for convenience I've split them into three categories. Actions that generate fire a single time, actions that generate fire per second, and actions that generate fire per some unit. Starting with the first category, the most obvious method of gaining fire is by getting an elimination. Fire earned from an elimination is based on the percentage of damage done to the target. At a maximum, 100 fire is earned for dealing 100% of the damage. At a minimum, 11 fire is earned for dealing 1% of the damage. This scale is slightly more forgiving than a 1 to 1 ratio of percentage to fire. Because of this, multiple players contributing to elimination will generate more total fire than a solo kill would. Don't you just love teamwork? Speaking of teamwork, assists can also generate fire, but this is where we start to see a trend of inconsistency. Only a small subset of all possible assists generate fire. Like eliminations, the fire earned from assists is dependent on the damage done to the victim. Shield Bash, Whip Shot, Hack, Harmony Orb, and Discord Orb all result in 5 to 15 fire. Strangely, stacking both Zenyatta Orbs will only yield 20 fire, rather than the expected 30. Sigma's Rock and Zarya's Grav give 5 to 25 fire. Lucio Boop, Mercy Heals, and Mercy Damage Boost all result in 5 to 35 fire. And Regen Burst, Ana Heals, Bionade, Sleep Dart, and Nano Boost earn 5 to 60 fire. Funnily enough, D.Va and Ash do earn assist fire when using their bugged assist methods that I covered in a prior video. When it comes to environmental kills, there is no explicit fire bonus. But for some reason, certain heroes earn assist fire from these kills. This is technically double dipping since the assist fire is earned on top of the fire from the kill. The fire system likely attributes the world as the killer, giving an assist to the player who caused the knockback. This behavior has no congruency between heroes though. For instance, a Shield Bash environmental kill does earn assist fire, but a whip shot does not. Hacking a player counts, but freezing a player doesn't count. Halt counts, but Doomfist knockbacks don't. You get the idea. I'll quickly go through the remaining methods of earning fire. Stunning an enemy earns 10 fire, though Reinhardt's Earth Shatter is the only stun that triggers this. Things like Cassidy's Flashbang and Briggs Shield Bash do not earn fire from the stun itself. 
hooking an enemy earns 10 fire. A speed boost assist earns 10 fire, though interestingly this does not have a distinct name and is just called assist. Freezing an enemy earns 25 fire. Trapping an enemy earns 25 fire. Hacking an enemy earns 25 fire. Sleeping an enemy earns 25 fire. Recon assists earn 25 fire. Resurrecting a teammate earns 25, just kidding, 60 fire. And ultimate shutdowns earn 50 fire, but only when the ultimate is cancelled with a kill. Cancelling the ult with a stun will not give fire. This 50 fire bonus is only earned when shutting down one of the 8 ultimates shown on screen. So no, shutting down ultimates from Sigma, Mercy, Moira, and so on do not count. Some types of deployable objects also generate fire when destroyed. Destroying a Torb turret earns 10 to 50 fire, again depending on the percentage of damage dealt. Destroying a Symmetra turret earns 1 to 10 fire. Destroying a Symmetra teleporter earns 10 to 25 fire. It's possible to destroy both teleporters at the same time, doubling the amount of fire. Destroying a Junkrat trap earns 5 to 25 fire. Destroying a Supercharger earns 10 to 100 fire. Destroying a Diva Mech earns 10 to 100, just as eliminating a player does. And destroying a Venom Mine earns a modest 10 fire. Every other deployable does not give fire, including Immortality Field, Translocator, Concussion Mine, Proximity Mine, and Bob. Moving on, methods of earning fire from objectives are based on time. Pushing the payload earns 2 fire per second, regardless of how fast it is moving. Capturing a control point earns 10 fire per second. And halting progress of any objective earns 5 fire per second. A subtle difference exists between game modes. Attackers on a contested point will not earn fire, even though attackers on a contested payload will. There is also a flat 25 fire bonus for completing the capture of a point or by pushing a payload to a checkpoint. This makes capturing a point from start to finish a great source of fire. Roughly 325 fire over the span of 30 seconds. These last few methods of gaining fire are measured per unit, such as healing. Support heroes earn 0.06 fire for every 1 HP healed, except for 2 heroes. Brigitta and Moira earn 0.4 fire per HP healed, a 33% reduction compared to other supports. Non-support heroes can also earn fire for healing. Bastion, Soldier, Mei, Sombra, Reaper, and Genji all get 0.04 fire for every 1 HP healed. Roadhog earns slightly less than everybody else at 0.033 fire for every HP healed. Damage blocking provides another form of fire generation. Blocking damage with barriers earns 0.02 fire for every one damage blocked. Heroes with barriers include Reinhardt, Winston, Orisa, Sigma, Brigida, and Symmetra. Blocking damage with Zarya bubbles earns 0.03 fire for every one damage absorbed. Diva's Matrix earns 0.04 fire for every one damage blocked. Sigma's little suck thing earns 0.05 fire for every one damage absorbed. And Maywalls earn the same amount as regular barriers, 0.02 fire per one damage blocked. Finally, deflecting damage earns 0.05 fire for every one point of damage deflected. Welp, that covers every method of gaining fire that I could find. But it still only paints half the picture. After all, everything that goes up must come down. So how is fire lost? In general, the fire meter constantly drains at a rate of 4.25 fire per second. We can confirm this by timing how long it takes for the fire meter to fully deplete from different amounts of fire. At 500 fire, this takes 117 seconds. With 1000 fire, it takes 235 seconds. And at 2000 fire, it takes 470 seconds. All of these result in the 4.25 value mentioned earlier, but there's a problem when comparing each meter visually. They appear to drain at different rates. What causes this? It turns out that fire exceeding the meter is drained much faster than the baseline rate, but eventually slows below the baseline rate once within the meter. 
In fact, if you look closely, you can actually see it slow down. This prevents the meter from being pegged at full capacity for several minutes, but avoids being punishing by allowing the rest of the fire to linger. To be honest, I'm not sure what the exact drain over time curve looks like. Ordinarily, I would spend more time investigating, but considering this game is literally going to be deleted within the next 24 hours, I think it's fine to skip. Even though the fire system is a very arbitrary way of measuring performance, I'll kind of miss it in Overwatch 2. It's one of those out-there mechanics that helped separate Overwatch from other first-person shooters of its time. While we may never know whether or not fire directly factors in to things like play of the game or skill rating, we do know it has forever ingrained itself in Overwatch culture.